Foreign correspondent Maggie Ruley is learning that an additional 355 foreign nationals crossed the Rafah border into Egypt today. Maggie joins me now from Cairo. So you've been speaking with those who actually got out of Gaza. What did they tell you, Maggie? Yeah, you know, I think the one thing everyone keeps telling us is just they're in shock. We met up with one woman, Maha, from New Jersey. Uh, she just got out yesterday. Her story, as she tells it, you know, she she woke up before dawn, uh, before sunrise, found out that her name was on this list. She had enough fuel in the tank just to make one effort to get to the border. She drove there. Her name's on the list. She presses through. It's a 12-hour journey in total. She doesn't get here to Cairo until 10 p.m. that night. And Kira, when we asked her for an interview, she still said yes. She sat down with us 10.30 p.m. after that long day. She said that's how important it is to her to tell her story. She says she's now struggling with PTSD. She wants to tell others what she's gone through and what her family is going through. Take a listen. It's brutal. It's the, the, um, the total number of people killed is too high, too fast, too many women and children cannot be justified. Bill Maha tells us she had to leave behind a sister and brother who are still in Gaza, but she has four children in New Jersey. And we're seeing a lot of this, Kara, people having to make really tough decisions, some families separating, uh, the kind of decisions that you, know, you hope no one ever has to make. Kara. So how well do you think this whole process is going, Maggie, crossing uh, in, you know, at the border there? And do you know anything more about the Americans that are still trying to get out? Yeah, Kerry, you know, I think at the end of the day, this is a complicated and confusing process. And if we've learned anything, speaking with Americans who are trying to get out, they're often left in the dark. I mean, we're facing so many challenges here. One, uh, people often are in complete communication blackouts. They might not have internet. They might not have cell service. Even if the State Department is trying to reach them, they often can't get a hold of them to let them know if their names are on this list. Um, two, we're also seeing how difficult and danger it is, dangerous it is to often make that trip to the border. Again, Maha telling us she had one chance, enough fuel in the tank for just one chance to go to the border. So people have to make these tough decisions of do they risk it all today if they think their name's on the list. And then three, this list that we keep talking about, it's announced every day, but it changes every single day. Uh, you know, this morning we found out that there are 367 Americans on the list today. That number will change tomorrow. And uh, ABC spoken with lawyers representing Americans inside Gaza right now that say at one point um, their name was on the list, a mother that they were speaking to, her name was on the list, and her daughter's wasn't. The next day, her daughter's was, and hers wasn't. So again, this confusion is leading to a lot of difficulties at the border. This is the third day the border's been open. People are hopeful that maybe we'll see more progress, but right now it's just being described as utter chaos here. Well, and then you have the Palestinian refugees, um, and Egypt hasn't fully opened its border to them. So are they, what are they saying? Political risk, fear? Well, I think this is complicated too, Karen. We're seeing the whole region right now really on edge. Uh, it's a very risky time for multiple countries here. And the Egyptian authorities have been quite outspoken. We've heard the Egyptian president speaking out on this issue. And there are, are two reasons, according to Egyptian authorities. One, he's quoted as saying, Egypt has affirmed and is reiterating its vehement rejection of the forced displacement of the Palestinians and their transfer to Egyptian lands in Sinai, going on to say it will shatter the dream of an independent independent Palestinian state. But there's also a second reason uh, that the president gets into. He also addresses the fear of Hamas entering Egypt. Uh, he's quoted as saying, um, Sinai would become a base for launching operations against Israel. In that case, Israel would have the right to defend itself and its national security and would deal with Egypt as responsible and launch strikes on Egyptian territory. So Egyptian authorities are really saying there's two reasons that they're reluctant to open up the border freely. And it's also part of the reason we're seeing so many complications at the border right now. Yeah, the entire situation is complicated. No easy answer for anything. Maggie Ruley, Cairo Forrest. Maggie, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.